Welcome to another episode of uh, IntentWise Connect webinars. Today's topic is an exciting one. You know, it's all about how do you, for brands that are looking for expansion, how do you expand beyond Amazon in particular? How do you drive growth uh, on Walmart? Uh, I am Srinath Reddy, one of the founders and CEO here at IntentWise. Uh, just a quick intro on IntentWise. We are an analytics company working with brands and agencies worldwide, um, offering two primary solutions. One is an ad management platform really designed to help you manage your ad spend efficiently across Amazon, Walmart, Target, Instacart, and through our Creo partnership, a number of other retailers as well. And then the second solution is what we call Intentwise Analytics Cloud. What that is designed to do is help you get a good handle on all your critical Amazon and e-com data. Uh, all the way from automating data collections to simplifying reporting, visualization, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and also uh, part of our, one of our key data sources is Amazon Marketing Cloud. My uh, presenters today, my uh, my guests, uh, super excited to have them here. I have the pleasure of hosting Jeff, Jeff Campbell. He's the, uh, he's the uh, president of AI Commerce. Um, and then Jerry Gertis, he is the... Um, uh, he's the uh, uh, director uh, as well as head of media activation at AI Commerce. AI Commerce has been an intent-wise partner um, in the space. And one of the things that makes them unique, in my view, is not only are they a full-service agency, they are managing several of their own brands across marketplaces. So that just gives them a unique, unique vantage point as well as experience, uh, which they are going to share with us today. Also, a key thing to note, and you can see that in their titles, um, both Jeff and Jerry are educators. Uh, yeah, so we, and this is a, this is an education session um, around Walmart and other marketplaces. So super excited. With that, let me turn this over to Jeff, and he's going to kick off our uh, presentation today. Hey, everybody. Just quick background to set the stage on uh, AI Commerce. Thanks, Srinath, and really appreciate uh, Intendwise for having us on here. Um, as, as you mentioned, we are brand owners. We own 11 brands, uh, and that's where we got our start. We built out the process, the tech, uh, and got our experience with those brands, launching them, throwing brands upwards of $50 million uh, focused on marketplaces. Uh, we found that some brands didn't want to be owned uh, or purchased uh, at this point, and so we have an agency model, which I run, um, and you can see uh, we've applied that experience process and technology and tools to an agency model working with a lot of brands. Well, let's get into it. Um, let me start with some quick hitter slides to kind of set the stage on the industry and the market. Um, in recent years, we've all heard consumers start their product searches on Amazon more than anywhere else, right? The, the stack that kept up the Google executives. But according to Jungle Scout now, uh, last month, Amazon's lead is actually yielding to alternative marketplaces and social channels. And research is showing those Gen Z digital natives, they're using more platforms than any prior generation. So the diversity and the decentralization should continue with some of these interesting trends. So next, it's important to look at the pie chart of the US retail e-commerce sales. Uh, it's no surprise Amazon's dominant, but according to eMarketer, 62% of e-commerce sales happen off of Amazon. That's what we're going to focus on today, and that's still a sizable opportunity given the size of the market. Diving further into that expanding marketplace ecosystem, in, in 2022, the Association of National Advertisers found 56% of U.S. brands use more than five retail media networks. 16% even use more than 10, uh, beyond Amazon indeed. Uh, and if you find yourself is still you know, focused on advertising, that's, uh, you're in a great place. And you can see, um, if you're not on the bleeding edge, we certainly need to get ahead of, uh, of the mainstream and launch additional marketplaces and find where there's consumers. And then next, uh, you know, we all know it's pay to play out there, right? So let's take a look at digital advertising budgets. And we'll go a little more into depth here. Um, but retail media ad spend, which is shown in red, is growing rapidly, but it represents under 20% of the total digital ad high. Um, surprisingly low, in my opinion, given the comparative ROAS and customer acquisition costs, the performance we see 
when you compare the many, many channels. And a couple more slides here. These are a few quick US e-com trends to just recap kind of the growth and where that opportunity is. The first graph is showing the expected continued growth of e-commerce. It's still under 20% of total retail sales. Only one in five are online. Contrast that with uh, countries like China, which are uh, more like six, 60% uh, online but we're expecting 10 to 11% annual growth for the next several years. So growing that base, which is good to see. The middle graph, the second graph shows marketplace sales should continue to grow around 15% every year. Now that's faster than that total industry we just talked about at 10 to 11%. And again, a good reason to be listening in today. The third chart is a focus on marketplace advertising spend with that expected growth in the low 20%. Uh, each year for the next several years, and it's doubled its share of the total media budget just over the last few years, and as mentioned, it's a little under 20%. So opportunities across the board, and there's a lot to learn from the first movers already. The next slide, you know, you will get this if you've signed up uh, and be able to look at the category level, um, which I think is so important to understand. Food and Bev, health, personal care, auto, rounding out some of the top growth opportunities, but definitely take a uh, look at this as you as you receive it later. All right. So here's six e-commerce trends that we're watching. Uh, it's about going to where that puck's going to be. So first, social commerce. Want to call that out? Driven by TikTok and behaviors such as live streaming and um, and whatnot, will continue to grow, especially with Gen Z as mentioned. Half of social users are expected to make a direct purchase this year. Uh, and TikTok buyers are expected to reach parity with Facebook and surpass Instagram uh, this year as well. So not only do we have the website, we have social commerce, and we have marketplaces. And it's really going to be that consumer behavior that's going to drive um, where purchases are. And as much as we wish and hope they find our website, we can avoid fees and capture that first party data. Um, a lot of consumers just uh, don't want to give their credit card and email address to one more source and will shop in other places. So we need to be there. Second, uh, retail media is moving aggressively beyond search uh, into upper ad formats such as streaming TV and other off-site uh, display and video ad networks. 54% of brands see their retail media spending as upper funnel, so brand building. Uh, but that said, according to a recent study by Merkel, uh, less than 30% are using upper funnel metrics such as reach and new to brand buyers, CAC and LTV uh, to, you know, pair with that brand building activity. Um, and then 13 to 14% of retail media ad spend is expected off a retailer's marketplace or site in 2023. And that's a 40% jump. Um, ad, on-site ad investment still expected to grow 18%, but we're seeing a lot more of those off-site networks uh, to embrace. Third, B2B uh, or B2B to C, right? Driven by younger digital first buyers, the B2B marketplaces are enjoying triple digit percentage growth. Um, Amazon B2B has a 32% share, but there are over 400 US uh, commercial and vertical industry specific marketplaces out there. Check out Fair and Tundra, Supply Hog. There's a lot of vertical specific ones, but do make sure that you have a tight reseller policy so the buyers don't pop up as direct uh, you know, direct to consumer competition on Amazon or whatnot. Fourth, uh, let's not forget about the OGs. Physical retail continues to grow. Uh, mixing D2C, wholesale channels, online, offline, is really the best mix to prevail in this profit-strained economy. A wider reach, more products, increased footprint, stronger brand recognition. Uh, Range Me is a great place to start to get noticed by some of these retail reps help as well. Number five, global expansion. So worldwide retail e-commerce is expected to grow at 9%, a little slower than the U.S. itself because there are some issues over in China that's stunting their growth a little bit. Um, but that's on a $5.4 trillion base. So 9% of, of that is still a massive amount of, uh, of sales dollars to be had. India, Indonesia, Mexico, Brazil, are among the emerging markets with significant sales expected uh, and double digit growth. <clears throat> Amazon's likely the easiest to expand globally. 
Uh, their platform reaches shoppers in over 180 countries. A lot of accounts you set up in one place, you clone your US account, you can expand and, uh, and serve to other countries as well. But again, do your market research because there are regional players, Shopee, Lazada, C Discount, Mercado Libre, and more, depending on what uh, and where you're trying to target. And finally, diversification, right? We, we've learned, hopefully, don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Retailers and additional online marketplaces, they're coming for Amazon's ad business. Amazon currently commands 75% of retail media ad spending, uh, but there's more than 40 different retail media networks in operation. The majority are, are less than three years old. Retailers are continuing to launch marketplaces. They're adding offsite ad inventory networks. They've got in-store media opportunities, and they've got all this first-party data that helps us uh, segment for ad targeting and measurement. Uh, retailer economic pressures are going to continue to advance new, especially online marketplaces, and those are uh, great things to take advantage of. So in, in summary, the fragmentation and complexity will continue and just something we have to get used to. Let's look at a quick case study. Look at those lovable silicone light up nightlights that keep the, keep the monsters away. This is, uh, those are Lumi pets. And, you know, this is an interesting journey. It started out on Amazon only. Uh, but since we added many uh, direct-to-consumer marketplaces, we established B2B relationships with companies like FAIR uh, and had some resellers helping us in offline channels. And we're using retail reps to get into massive um, big box stores, Target, Walmart, Best Buy, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, Rest in Peace, uh, and more. We've seen this business more than double year over year. So venture beyond Amazon, and here's a process to help. At this point, you might not know that Amazon's the next step, right? It's number two in the in the mix, but let's start off and do that market and that niche research, right? Target, uh, understand your target consumer behavior. Um, what's their competitor positioning? Um, do you have competitive advantages in certain channels and certain markets? And what product mix do you want to roll out? I mean, it might not be all of your all of your portfolio, and maybe just some top sellers or some top sellers here, but different top sellers at a different uh, different location or marketplace. Second is international compliance. If you're going abroad, you know, do you need to set up an overseas company? Do you need local representation in terms of a buyer? That's requ required in some, some markets. Uh, currency and exchange rate considerations, right? Product compliance, trademarks, customs clearance, VATs, uh, taxes, VAT numbers, et cetera, all things to uh, consider as you build out your expansion plans. Third is <clears throat> arguably the biggest, right? And this is the math, right? The profitability and cost analysis and, and setting goals. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier, people, process, technology. Your team expansion expertise, do you have it in-house? Are you going to need to partner? Are you going to need to hire, right? Your cost of goods sold and break even, right? It's going to take a little bit more probably to ship over to, uh, to another country. And, uh, you know, what's that fulfillment uh, look like? And we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but what's that break-even analysis? Are you wholesaling in 1P or is it uh, continue with a 3P model? Uh, is it a mix, right? Advertising costs, commission, freight, fees, uh, third-party technology, in-house technology, and then cash impact, right? What are your inventory requirements? If you're in 10 markets, that's a lot of inventory you have to have around, around the world. So think about that. Or as we get to fulfillment, you know, if you have different marketplaces, Amazon's not going to love uh, using FBA to uh, fulfill to Walmart or, or others. Um, I skipped over four, which is channel considerations. Think through conflicts, right? Um, pricing strategies, resellers. Uh, Amazon's still out there scraping and looking for a lower price. And if it finds one, you're going to lose that buy box. And that's a real problem with, with what could be your largest channel. Um, if you're using B2B or wholesale marketplaces, Again, uh, make sure those resellers don't pop up as competitors and, uh, and hurt your own strategy. We talked a little bit about warehouse and fulfilling, but think about how the products are going to get delivered to the customers as you expand. And if you have current operations shipping out of your garage, I don't know. Is that, uh, is that scalable? Uh, do you need a 3P? Um, again, do you want to use Fulfilled by Walmart, which is a, which is a pretty solid platform uh, as they're building that out. Uh, and we're using it for many of our partners and clients. And then last, content and creative strategy. Um, this is uh, not only just about translate translation and localization of any listings, but um, customizing for each marketplace. Every marketplace is 
all the way down to the ad specs and the ad type types are going to have nuances that you need to consider and build around um, and educate yourself on. So just a little framework here uh, as we think about expansion. And now I'm going to hand it over to Jerry to dive further into the Walmart opportunity. Jerry? All right. Well, thanks, Jeff. Um, so as you've heard through some of um, the info that Jeff shared prior here, Walmart has been making significant strides in the e-commerce space, and their marketplace is quickly becoming a major player in the industry. So if you've been considering expanding your online presence and reaching new customers, this is really the perfect time to test the waters with Walmart's third-party marketplace. So let's take a quick look at some of the reasons why now is a great time. While Amazon is likely top of mind for your e-commerce sales, you know we really have to begin looking at the upside of Walmart. Here we can see a 10.9% change in e-com sales this year compared to last year and a predicted change of 11.3% into next year, 2024. Walmart actually came in second across the top 16 retail e-com sales, coming in at 9.9% growth compared to Amazon at 7.6%. Now, brands are really catching on regarding exposure and omni-channel advantages, as well as channel diversification and incrementality that Walmart does offer. First, I want to talk a little bit about um, exposure and omni-channel advantages here. Um, we can go back one, Jeff. We're still on that same slide. Uh, we, we really have to begin looking at, uh, um, you know, the uh, Walmart as the nation's largest retailer, right? They're obviously incredibly accessible. Uh, with 90% of us likely living with just within just 10 miles of one of their stores. You know, this means that your products have the potential to reach a massive audience, both in store and online. Now, here's an interesting fact, right? With Walmart, people often tend to associate them with discounts, perhaps even a more price discerning shopper, right? Yet nearly 75% of Walmart share gain come from households making more than 100K annually. This shows you that Walmart attracts a diverse range of customers, including those with higher incomes. And additionally, nearly two thirds of US consumers made a purchase from Walmart within the past month. This buying behavior really demonstrates the high level of engagement and trust that consumers have with the brand. Also, as we talk about advertising a little bit later, um, by selling on Walmart's third party marketplace, you can access first party consumer data for behavioral targeting. And this is valuable information that can help you better understand your customers and really tailor your marketing strategies accordingly for much better returns. So, you know, thinking about this, it's important to remember that 62% of e-commerce purchases happen off Amazon. And again, with Walmart being the number two player here in e-commerce sales, there's obviously that strong opportunity for you to diversify both your online footprint and tap into a different customer base. All right, we can go to the next one, Jeff. Um, so, and just to drive the point home um, so that it's clear Walmart is growing, uh, in Q3, Walmart, they added 8,000 new sellers, um, and the number of marketplace SKUs grew by 50% up to about 370 million. So they're growing in e-commerce sales, marketplace sales, and overall advertising revenue. Sales and revenue have been steadily rising post-pandemic, as you can see here and are predicted to continue to increase through this year and beyond given they're actively working to attract new audiences by investing in higher priced traffic driving brands and categories like beauty and fashion, auto and home improvement, as well as um, investing time and energy into developing social commerce initiatives like live streaming, which is really exciting. So this means that there's potential for your brand to benefit from these investments and again, reach those new customers. Now, <clears throat> we can't talk Walmart without including grocery in the mix. Walmart has experienced really significant growth, specifically in its digital grocery sales. And this is driven by mainly changing consumer behavior and the company's strategic investments in its online grocery services. Um, in fact, over the next three years, Walmart's digital grocery sales will see a compound annual growth rate of just shy of 12%, right around 11.9%, while their in-store sales compound annual growth rate will be less than 1%. As of last year, grocery already accounts for uh, about 58% of their online sales. And so as we know from research and data and forecasts like, uh, from the likes of eMarketer here that Walmart's US online grocery sales will continue to grow, reaching 45 billion through this year. By next year, approximately 17% of Walmart's grocery sales will come from digital channels alone. 
Now, <clears throat> the Walmart marketplace uh, presents a significant opportunity for sellers really looking to expand their online presence and reach a wider customer base. Uh, over the past year, Walmart has made some substantial improvements to, it mar to its marketplace and advertising uh, offerings, as you can see here. Try, they're trying to really try to make it more attractive and, and user, user friendly for us sellers. From their Walmart fulfillment services, which offers uh, fast shipping, reliable customer support, and streamlined inventory management, which all really makes it easier for us to manage our businesses effectively, uh, to improvement to their ad platforms with things like their uh, second price auction that helps protect you from overpaying on CPCs, even down to providing business mentorship. Um, they continue to really listen to seller feedback and invest their time and money into improving the platform so that we as sellers have what we need to grow our exposure and sales with them. Let me go to the next one. All right, perfect. So, um, so you have an idea on, on how you can, can get started with Marketplace if you're not already on there. Uh, I've outlined the key steps involved in joining and launching your products on the Marketplace. I won't go through it in too much detail. It's a pretty straightforward process. But the first thing you're going to do is apply and qualify, right? So you're going to start by submitting an application to become a Walmart Marketplace seller. Uh, Walmart will then review your application to ensure your business meets their criteria. Simple things in the beginning, such as having a U.S. tax ID, um, a history of, of good sales and reputable products. They just want to know that you're a legit business selling reputable products. Um, <clears throat> once you're approved, they'll send you an invitation to register your account fully. Um, you're going to want to complete that process by providing your full business information, all of your uh, tax details, and then you're going to want to agree to their retail agreement. Uh, from there, you're going to set up your partner profile. Uh, you're going to provide information about, about your business, um, your company description, your logo, uh, things like your customer service contact details and your shipping policies. You want to get all that set up up front. Uh, and then once we have that uh, behind us, now we can move into the fun part of, um, you know, actually our product setup. So you can start adding your products to the marketplace. You're going to be creating product listings with um, detailed product descriptions, images, and pricing. Hopefully you have all of that um, set up prior to actually going into this step. And then depending on how many products you want to sell on the marketplace, um, you can either use Walmart Seller Central uh, or integrate your existing e-com platform using their API if you have bulk uploads and or large catalogs. Uh, from there, you're going to want to make sure you test thoroughly, right? Once you have all of your product listings created and before launching, uh, you want to ensure your products and order processing systems are, are functioning uh, by conducting test orders, making sure everything runs smoothly there. This is really going to help you save a lot of headaches. Um, you want to identify and resolve any potential issues with your product listings up front before going live. And then finally, you're gonna launch, right? Super exciting. You're gonna um, complete all these steps. You'll get approval from Walmart. Your products will then go live on the marketplace. Now you can start tapping into the millions of shoppers um, on the platform. <clears throat> Next slide. So uh, quick word of warning, as we talk about getting onto the marketplace, <clears throat> this is something we recently came up uh, against with one of our clients. So um, Walmart, apparently they create a, a new listing for each seller, even if the product is the exact same one, right? Now on Amazon, it's the opposite. You have one product, multiple sellers. They all share the same product listing. Not the case here on Walmart, as you can see from the screenshot. It's the same product, multiple sellers. Now, the kicker here is that our client is not set up on Walmart yet yet resellers have already come onto the platform. And we're looking at this as a significant risk. It's going to pose a battle when the client does decide to come on. We're going to have to outrank all of these resellers. Um, there's some risk to brand reputation, right? The resellers here may have bad reviews associated with them that um, then get associated with the actual brand. And then the headaches of dealing with the brand portal, IP violations, et cetera, so I guess the takeaway here is, um, you know, if you're not on the marketplace yet and you're considering it, uh, much better for you to be on before anybody else so that you have a leg up on, on dealing with these issues. You, you might not be selling, but one of your uh, competitors or resellers might be. And, and if you saw on those listings, they were $33 a piece. Uh, that's actually a $12 product. 
So uh, we showed this to our uh, our clients, uh, Sunrise Flower, Flower Mill, and they were flabbergasted. Who's paying thirty three dollars, and why is uh, there a full page of uh, resellers when they don't have a reseller program? So something to look into again when you look for the uh, the research before you're launching. But important to be there, even if you don't have the advertising funds, just to make sure your your pricing experience, your freshness, as Jerry mentioned, is is uh, is covered. All right. Um, so beyond getting set up to sell on Marketplace, uh, then comes the getting exposure, right, through advertising. Now, Walmart offers unique advertising opportunities for businesses looking to reach a, a large audience. Um, their U.S. Nat, net ad revenues uh, will account for about 8.2% share of U.S. retail media digital ad spending by next year. And so Walmart Connect, which is their in-house advertising arm, they provide powerful tools and solutions to help you effectively promote your products and, and ultimately drive those sales. So this retail media platform offers you an opportunity to reach their shoppers um, online, in the app, uh, and across its brick and mortar locations through a few different ad programs like search, display, uh, DSP, and even in-store digital media. So on the next slide, we're uh, looking at media performance between Amazon and Walmart here. And you can see from these graphs that in recent quarters, Walmart's average CPC has been consistently lower than Amazon's. And that provides us with a more affordable option to promote our products and reach potential customers much more efficiently. And while both Walmart and Amazon offer effective advertising solutions, this recent data suggests that Walmart's ROAS has been outperforming Amazon's. Uh, this indicates that sellers um, can achieve a strong return on their advertising investment on both platforms, perhaps even stronger on Walmart, right? And as mentioned earlier regarding that sales profit uh, incrementality with a potential, potentially higher ROAS and lower cost, that can certainly have a, a positive impact on your ad spend and overall profitability. All right. Um, so while Walmart Connect offers a few programs, uh, as I mentioned, uh, sponsored ads, DSP, in-store advertising, uh, we're going to focus on sponsored search here as it's the lowest barrier of entry. And it's typically the starting point for most brands coming on to advertise on the platform. Um, you can see here, I kind of outlined the different types of ad formats they offer. The first, first is search in-grid ads. And these are the ads that appear within the search results. Um, they blend with the organic listings. And by placing your products at the top of relevant search results, these search in-grid ads help you capture the attention of potential customers and increase the likelihood of clicks and conversions. On Amazon, we typically see the sponsored ads in this format perform the best. Um, and it's very much the same on uh, Walmart as well. Uh, sponsored brand ads is next. Uh, these showcase your brand logo. Uh, a custom headline and up to three featured products. These can appear at the top of search results, um, driving your brand awareness and directing customers to your product listings or even a custom landing page. You also have carousels. Um, carousel ads display multiple products in a horizontally scrolling format. And this allows customers to browse through your offerings much easier. Um, they can see it in one uh, section. And these ads can appear on various pages. Uh, they can appear on the search results. Uh, category pages and item detail pages, again, providing increased visibility for your products depending on that page placement. Then we have buy box banner ads. These are ads that are displayed on the product detail page itself right below the buy box. And so these ads offer a prime opportunity to really promote complementary products or upsell higher margin items. And they really encourage customers to explore more of your offerings. If you're, if you're coming from the Amazon world and you're familiar with Amazon ad types, you can see that um, conceptually, these are quite similar. There's definitely a few key differences in terms of targeting options and the actual mechanics of running ads and optimization, which we won't have time for today. Um, but for the most part, these ad formats should give you a good idea of, of what you'll be working with. So you've got your products all set up and ready to go on Marketplace. You've identified your advertising goals and registered for Walmart Connect. Now what, right? So as far as activating these ads, you've got two choices. One, you can work directly within Walmart's ad center and their native interface and dashboard. Um, or number two, you can choose a reputable top rated platform partner to really make life easier. Enter intent wise, right? So 
Um, here at AI Commerce, we're, we're definitely raving fans of IntentWise. Uh, they got a, a beautiful UI and, and UX experience, meaningful data visualization, and, and much more efficient ways of managing campaigns and ads with all of the automations and, and rules that we can use um, to our advantage. Srinath, you want to talk a little bit more about um, what you offer here in the way of Walmart? Yeah, so we, a little quick run through, we are, uh, we're excited to be Walmart Connect partners. And then I think we are staying true to our mission with, uh, you know, enabling ad optimization as well as analytics around Walmart, which is to uh, bring to you flexibility around bid management, whether that's through AI or rules-based automation, make diagnostics of performance super easy, uh, and also deliver really powerful and automated analytics. Um, so that's what we do. And the other thing to note when you're an API partner, Walmart is definitely taking an API first approach. Uh, so with that, what I mean is that, for instance, sponsor brand campaigns, you could only run through an API partner like us now uh, until until even last week. You can now you um, uh, execute sponsor brand campaigns through their console as well. Uh, but there's more things coming like that. For example, sponsor video uh, campaigns is an example where it's going to be API first and you'll get access to that capability through our platform versus console. Yeah, so we, again, we are excited to be Walmart partners in this and there's a lot more to come ahead of us. And it's great to be working with partners like AI Commerce who also influence our, you know, go forward uh, product roadmap. So let's let's look and uh, wrap up here with a, with a case study and some highlights of what we talked about and then get to the Q and the Q and A. Um, here, here's a great example. One of the one of the biggest cons or complaints you hear about Walmart is the lack of volume when compared to Amazon. So this client is an example where they had a few non-differentiated items. You can see car covers, seat covers, knives, kitchen products, uh, and they were not the lowest cost seller on Amazon. So it was not working well. ROAS was was poor. Uh, we were able to move them to Walmart for wins in both volume and efficiency. Uh, we saw 20% additional sales on half of the ad spend, uh, and that led to some major ROAS improvements. So um, if you're struggling with Amazon, that's one great reason to go to Walmart, uh, as we did with this, uh, this partner, and they saw wonderful gains uh, from less competition and lower prices. Cool. Well, wrapping up, um, you know, why, why expand beyond Amazon? U.S., right? Amazon's been our primary e-commerce breadwinner for years. It's, it's had the majority of volume, and that, that likely won't change soon. That said, there are many reasons to diversify and expand into emerging opportunities. So let's just recap quickly. First, consumer behavior, right? Younger, digitally native customers and price-conscious, inflation-driven consumers, they're on a multi-channel journey, like it or not, right? They're not always just going to find your website. Uh, additionally, Amazon may not be or remain your target customer's e-commerce go-to, right? Second, uh, as we saw in the, in the Sunrise Flour Mill example, brands must protect their market share and their brand experience across all platforms where e-commerce happens. Are resellers properly representing your desired pricing, your shipping, customer service, packaging, inserts, quality, and, and more, right? Are the listing optimizations and product feed feedback uh, loops being incorporated across channels and into future product development cycles? Uh, is the customer relationship with, with you, the brand, uh, your resellers, or the marketplace? All concerns to think about um, around uh, controlling the, the brand experience. Third, uh, diversify to mitigate rising selling costs, fulfillment fees, and margin pressures. Amazon's becoming or has become increasingly crowded and competitive. So while lower volume CPCs and the ROAS benefits make Walmart a very attractive uh, platform and alternative, and their ad platform continues to strengthen, uh, brands must protect and win new market share to succeed in this new ecosystem of marketplaces and social commerce and website sales. Uh, fourth, Brands are pursuing faster sales growth, right? How are you going to comp last year? Amazon's growth is slowing, still growing. But as you saw earlier, uh, there might be some faster growth outlets that will help you uh, beat uh, last year and the previous year's numbers coming out of COVID. Number five, 
We all remember that big chart from our business school days. We need to innovate ahead of the consumer adoption curve and our competitor adoption curve. New sellers are flocking to marketplaces. Uh, test and learn prior to maturity and, and the higher barriers to entry. We've all been there. Nothing's more daunting than trying to launch a new product against a category averaging 3,000 reviews and you're trying to get you know number three or number four. Um, those, are, those are tough. Get while the getting's good. Finally, number six, remember that Amazon is not a market leader everywhere. Research your consumer's behavior. Ask them where they shop, right? Explore vertical specific marketplaces, growing B2B wholesale marketplaces, 1P versus 3P, and understand those global growth and regional marketplace uh, nuances and uh, growth opportunities as well. So the opportunity beyond Amazon with Walmart and others is real. Make sure you have the right experience, process, technology, uh, et cetera, partners for expansion. And with that, we will go to Q&A. Thank you. Here's our uh, contact information. If you would like to reach us, uh, I believe uh, the QR code should take us to either of the companies if you're on a schedule of time. Uh, please uh, feel free to do so. Uh, Jeff, Jerry, I'm going to relay some questions. I've got some myself, and there's there's a couple here in the Q&A section. Uh, there is uh, Nina. Uh, the question here is, what are some ways to combat the penetration of resellers uh, selling your product when you're on Walmart Marketplace? I know you touched on this. Yeah. Uh, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have this problem a lot and we saw the uh, the example of the Lumi Pets, right? And that's um, that's a product due to, due to price we have to have manufactured in China. We've found, unfortunately, our producer is, uh, is, you know, rolling a batch over to us and then rolling a batch over to Alibaba where um, people are reselling under uh, different names and they're popping up a few dollars cheaper and and we have to play whack-a-mole with heavily China-based companies to uh, to protect our IP and our and our trademarks. Um, so I, I won't rant too long. Global trademarks and country-specific trademarks are out there. Again, legal fees are probably I'd even say maybe not even worth uh, worth doing. It's hard to follow up. You know, people change names, and and it is really a game of whack-a-mole. Um, if they are using your uh, product name, your brand name, so in this case, Lumi Pets or Lumi World, um, Walmart has been very helpful for us, uh, Target and Amazon, um, in protecting our trademarks. You have an online kind of complaint system where you can submit a case and have them removed um, after you've you know got that trademark and paperwork in there. If they are just using your products or they have a knockoff, it gets a little bit harder um, there is third party software out there you can use to monitor these. Um, so we have some partners in that space. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it is really the case system that's going to going to do this. And by all means, order your product from them. It stinks to give them some revenue, but, you know, it'll it'll also tell you a little bit again in the case of that flower. Um, when was that produced? Is there any ways to trace um, where that was originally purchased? Was it from a certain wholesaler or batch or date? that um, rings bell and you you can kind of understand what reseller might be at the root of that. But your reseller agreements with your resellers, um, you know, Walmart's not going to get involved with. So you're going to have to send them the nasty grants from your lawyers and the cease and desist and all that uh, and manage that uh, that way. But, you know, if they're just selling a similar product that you have no proof is your product or and they're not violating trademarks, it can be difficult. But again, no different than Amazon. I will piggyback on that a bit. Um... You know, Amazon, similarly, Amazon, Walmart does take IP infringement seriously. And so um, the Walmart brand portal is sort of your first line of defense against uh, those violations. Yeah, which actually addresses your, uh, th there's another interesting question here from Luis. The uh, question is, will there be a similar reinforcement of IP on Walmart as with Amazon's brand registry? Yeah. So, so as I mentioned, um, you know, through through the Walmart brand portal, you have effectively some of the same tools and communication channels around IP infringement, um, unauthorized sellers, uh, violations, and the like through this portal. So they definitely do take it seriously, and it's a very similar process of case submissions and management through through that portal. 
Um, uh, one question I had uh, for, for the uh, on behalf of the audience here, uh, Jerry Jeff, is just Jerry, you laid out that setup process from start of start to launch. Can you share any sense of time frames around like how long that is typically taking for brands? Um, the the sign up process is is pretty quick in and of itself. I would say you know the first one three steps you can get done within forty eight to seventy two hours, and then the handoff for Walmart to approve everything um, is is relatively quick as well, twenty four to forty eight hours. So essentially, you can get the process done within a week's time. Um, the more consuming part of that is obviously the product uploads um, and making sure your listings are squared away there before you can actually launch. So product upload, set up, uh, product descriptions, and then testing of that is probably the most time consuming in that process. Got you. Jerry, you, had a, you did a great kind of review or summary or recap of all of the ad formats that are available on Walmart. Uh, obviously, as we at Internwise can see, Walmart is going through a uh, fairly accelerated innovation and change uh, on the advertising side. Uh, question on the advertising side, as, as a brand thinks about starting budgets, ad budgets uh, on Walmart, is there a framework uh, to think about that as to how much money do you want to allocate, if you, especially if you're just getting started? Yeah, and, and maybe I can answer that. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, you want to start sometimes, and again, it's so so dependent on category, but, you know, on Amazon, you probably want to spend about $50 per ASIN or SKU per day uh, in a budget to make sure at, at the beginning that you are getting the proper exposure. We know on Amazon, the more you spend and prove to, to Amazon at the keyword level, you can generate sales and over time you can replenish you'll start to see those organic rankings and that's where your profit's going to come from. Um, you know, I'd say again, rough $25 a day uh, per product or ASIN on Walmart. But, you know, if you're, if you're not prepared to spend at least $10,000 a month um, on a platform, you know, I, I, I'd kind of say maybe, uh, maybe it's not, not ready to just tiptoe into it. Um, you know, organic sales also with, um, with uh, Walmart, you have to be, I think around Jerry, it's 256th in ranking before you can even be eligible for ad spend. Mm -hmm. So it really is about getting some initial sales and you might need to use some off Walmart um, platform. So your Google, Facebook, your search social, uh, whatever, uh, to start driving some initial sales, get that flywheel turning, uh, building some initial reviews before you're even eligible for Walmart advertising. So important consideration as well. Uh, ultimately, it comes down to to ROAS for a lot of our clients. Uh, that's a that's a good metric for short term sales, uh, but it is siloed in an individual sale, which a lot of brands starting is is where they focus. The larger brands I've worked with, the um, you know the the Fortune one hundreds, they focus I think a lot more on customer acquisition costs and lifetime value, right? So if you've got let's use a food example, if you've got a really good you know snack bar. Um, people are willing to spend a lot more than even the cost or the, the revenue from that first purchase, because if they've got a st strong, tasty product, people will come in and rebuy uh, and repurchase and you make your money in the, in the long term. And there's some analytics where you can look at your repeat buyers and understand and do that math around LTV or, or customer acquisition costs, which is, which is CAC. Um, some of the new to brand metrics in, in Amazon are very helpful. And I think we're seeing more and more of that expand to those brand building minded uh, brands that are that are looking long term versus just how is you know does every single individual sale need to be profitable and ideally yes but a lot of times the CPCs can be high and the conversion rates can be low especially when you're trying to get a new brand off the ground that you know the ROAS is going to be upside down um, below a dollar and you know hopefully that doesn't make anybody pack up and, and go home there is certainly a several month commitment. Uh, that you want to make before you launch uh, a new marketplace. Uh, sounds like uh, this is a wrap. Again, Jerry, Jeff, uh, you've been great partners for us. Uh, this, uh, this Thank you for a super informative presentation. Again, uh, we'll share the recording and feel free to reach out to Jerry, Jeff, or me. Uh, you've got the contact info right here. And thank you, everyone, for joining. And uh, Thank you, guys. Thanks for having us. And we'll see you on Amazon and beyond. Thank you all. Bye.